Well, a perfect day for practice on day one of November as FIU just a couple days away from potential bowl eligibility. But first, as we take a chat with Brad Muhammad, what a game for you this past week at Marshall. Two interceptions, a pick six. Just take me through that game, one of the best of your career. Well, you know, coming into the game, I felt like I was very prepared. Um, I studied hard on these guys. I knew it would be the Marshall was a great team, great quarterback, great um, group of core receivers. So uh, coming in, I know that film study will be gr um, great for me coming in. Um, when I got on the field, you know, uh, the film study that I did throughout the week, it showed up on the field and I was able to make plays. Coaches did a great job of putting me in the right position. So, you know, it was it was a great feeling to actually be able to reap the rewards. You know, just coming in every day, you know, going over everything, repetition, repetition, repetition. It, it, it helps me out a lot because every day I see myself getting better and better. And when I was on the field, you know, it was just like going against scout teams, that, that same exact look. So. I, I seen the look like four or five times that week, so making a play, it made it seem effortless, but because it really was. I mean, being up there in West Virginia, we knew it was going to have to start fast, and that turnover the defense created just got the offense ready to go, and we just drove down field and made it first touchdown, second touchdown, third time, and kept going. And that's kind of part of the growing and part of the process is, you know, you learn how to deal, you know, with setbacks like we had against UCF to start the season. And then also you have to figure out, you know, what's the best way, you know, for your players and the coaching staff to emphasize how important it is that, you know, celebrate a win. You know, I absolutely have a great 12, 14, 16 hours on Sunday. And, and uh, but when it's time to go back, it's time to focus and get ready for the next game. And, and you have to learn how to deal with success. That pick six, man, it was a surreal moment, you know. I, first thing first, because I dropped two interceptions this year, so when the ball was coming, my eyes got wide, so I had to make sure I secured the ball, and then I was just looking at the pylon, and then when I crossed it, it was just a great feeling. So, Yes, with that game, everybody had to play the great role. You know, everybody did what they were supposed to do, and that's that's the great thing about the offense. If you do, if you do what we're supposed to do in the offense, it's going to be great. I mean, every week as a running back group, we just come in, watch film, come out here on the field, and just do what we have to do. We be where our feet are, and just – we just here, and we just make the best of the plays we get. They may be one of the most athletically talented football teams that we've played this entire season, and obviously statistics tell you that defensively, I mean, they are really good. Their front four defensive ends are guys that can absolutely fly up the field. they got good defensive tackles. Their linebackers are good. They can fill. They can run sideline to sideline, and, and the statistics don't lie. I mean, they've earned that. I mean, you could maybe make a comment if somebody was number one or number two after one or two games, that's one thing. But now after seven games, I mean, the truth comes out. Uh, offensively, you know, they got good skilled athletes and they can run the ball very well and they're good on special teams. They're, their returners on special teams may be as good as we've played against. The challenge will be, you know, keeping keeping the um, gaps filled with um, with the D linemen and linebackers. Um, as a secondary, we want to keep everything in front of us. So, you know, we're just going to stay, stay a sound football team and, you know, make sure we take care of our job and swarm to the football as a defensive unit. Like any other team, we have to do. You have to just press the press the, press the O line and make our reads and just 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 be running backs basically. Just do what we have to do. You know, it doesn't really matter what you've accomplished previously. You know, I mean, this game is critically important. It's a conference game against another team that's extremely well. Um, you know, they're winning, they're having success. So you got to be prepared and get ready for the best. You know, performance of the year. Yeah, this uh, we've been hearing a lot about bold talks, but that's not where our mind is. We just come out here every day and just practice and just be our four, have our 1440 and keep moving every day. We're looking to go to a championship. Man, it, it makes it a lot easier because knowing that any any anything can be taken from you at any moment. You know, you have to secure it. You know, with with staying staying true to who you are. I got a chance to speak on campus the other night on Monday night and uh, uh, the Trail of the Torch and they had maybe close to a thousand students on campus and one of the things that you want the students and the community to understand they play an important role. I mean, they're a big part of the success of a football team that they create an atmosphere, they create the electricity in the stands, uh, you know, it, it, the energy level clearly goes up with your players when they're being supportive and the, and the stands are packed. Our band has been fantastic. I'm gonna tell you what, those guys have done a great job, our cheerleaders, the Dazzlers. Now we just need to get the student body and the rest of the community to show up, uh, homecoming. I mean, these are, these are memories and things that you'll carry for the rest of your life and hopefully this will be something that'll be special. Ah, ah, you, ah.